has spoken in front of people, so mm -hmm. bear with me. Anyways, Theo asked me to come back. I did give this presentation in my final year in 2020 about how I was in possession of all these pop tabs, you can see. So I just came back to talk a little bit about how I acquired them and specifically about the community I got them from, which is near to an island where my family is from. So we'll go on a little bit. So first and foremost, I always like to share, I'm a very interesting person. <laughs> I like to share interesting facts about myself. So first, again, my name is Kylie. I did graduate from Guelph Humber in 2020, right before the pandemic, just like Caden. Or sorry, right as the pandemic was happening, just like Caden. So some very interesting facts about myself. So when I was 10 years old, I got my first bee sting, turned into a really horrible infection called flesh eating disease. <laughs> And I had to go on like a really horrible antibiotic to finally treat it. It actually got so bad that I was two days away from having my arm amputated. Um, but thankfully it pulled through. So that's always a really crazy fact that I tell people. <laughs> then another one that I found out a few years ago is that I can take uh, intravenous medication. This is when I do, <laughs> do IVs at the hospital. Um, a nurse gave me, I think it was saline and uh, pain medication. And within seconds, I had this really strong taste in my mouth. And I was kind of like, is it normal to taste these? And she just goes, oh, you're one of those. <laughs> and I was like, what does that mean? And she's like, it's very rare, but a handful of people can taste medication when it's put into your veins. So that's another interesting thing about myself. And then here you can see this is a picture of a blue-footed booby bird from the Galapagos Islands. I went on study abroad in 2019 to Galapagos. And this has now become my favorite animal because they're such unique creatures. <laughs> so if anyone has a more or equally interesting fact about themselves, I would love to hear it at the end of the presentation. Okay, let's get on with introducing you to Manitoulin or updating you on Manitoulin if you already know about it. So it is Manitoulin Island. It's located in Lake Huron, about six hours away from here in Toronto. Um, and in uh, Anishinaabe language, it's also known as Spirit Island. So that's a picture of Mantuan Island, and this is it in Lake Huron. Okay, so some Mantuan Island facts. It's the only swing bridge in Canada. It's located in Low Current, it's the main city. Um, there's about 108 freshwater lakes on this small island. Um, there is a island called Treasure Island, which is located in Lake Mindamoya, and it's the biggest island on a lake, on an island, in a lake, in the world. <laughs> so I have that title. Um, as of 2016, I looked for updated stats, but they haven't really updated them yet. The population is about 59% uh, European Canadian and 40.6% uh, First Nation. So it's the Anishinaabe people. And that's still growing and, and changing, but yeah, it's pretty balanced. You don't find many other nationalities on the island. Um, so there's two ways to get to Manitoulin Island. You can either drive through Espanola and cross the swing, uh, swing bridge in Little Current. It takes about six hours, or about the same time, you can drive up to Tobomori and take the ferry across called the Chichimon, and it goes to South Baymouth which is at the very uh, southwest corner of the island. So pop tabs and community development engagement on Mantua Island is what I'm mainly gonna talk about today. So because Mantua Island is a small island that's uh, northern, all the towns and communities are very close knit. They're very small. Everyone really knows each other. Um, and you kind of have no choice. You have to get to know your neighbors because you rely on one another and you need to know who you live with, right? There's a massive volunteer engagement on the island, especially my family in particular. They're always at any volunteer events. Um, when Theo was talking about, you know, the person that steps up does every little thing possible and it's just second nature to them, that is my family. <laughs> That's who I think of. So they're at everything. Um, why I got my pop tabs is my aunt collects pop tabs at every event she goes to. You know, she's experience some people, you know, laughing at her, wondering why she bothers, but it's important to her. She just has a passion to help people, and she has this idea that, yeah, it's just like a pop tab, one step at a time, every day at a time, 
So she'll even collect them at weddings, sports events, everything. So you see her going around collecting pop dogs. And obviously my family has started to join her, help her out. So there are different communities that celebrate uh, collective values and different heritage on the island. Um, there's lots of different cultural celebrations every, uh, every summer. Now those have kind of changed, you know, with COVID, they've had to do it in different capacities, distance, online, and stuff like that. Um, but just a few examples, uh, the August Song Weeker, it's, sorry, August Song Weekend, it's called the Hot Eater Celebration in Little Current. So these are haw berries that grow on Manitoulin Island, and for some reason, I guess just because it's one of the only locations in Canada where haw berries grow, the people, the locals of Manitoulin are called haw eaters. So we have that big celebration revolving around these haw berries, everyone comes out, they give out this jam, just a good celebration get everyone connected. Um, there's also a softball tournament called the Pearson Cup in Mindamoya. It's in June, it's always the Father's Day weekend. Again, just invite everyone of every skill level on the island or off the island to come and participate in a softball tournament. It's a really fun weekend for everyone. Then there's a community fair that's always the third weekend in August and that's in Providence Bay. So the community fair, you know, has the games and the rides and everything, but the biggest part, the most special part about the community fair is that they have a lot of competitions. So they have crafts and they have tractor pulling and they have um, heritage uh, where you can come and bring the vegetables that you've grown over the year and um, just the community gets together and really appreciates everyone's efforts and what they do on the island. Um, then there's the Mindamoya Special Olympics Tournament. So that's uh, Special Olympics. We have chapters all over Canada and Ontario, and there's one in Mindamoya. And it's just, again, we'll talk a little bit about it later. I was an actual coach for Special Olympics one year. And it brings together anyone with an intellectual or physical difference can come and participate in so on a softball team and the game is modified so that everyone is included and everyone can play to a certain, whatever way that they can. Um, then there's also an annual fish fry, which is the second Wednesday in July. It's at the Big Lake Schoolhouse. Um, so I can't remember, it's been quite a few years since I went, but I feel like they got, used to get donations from fishers um, to feed everyone that turned out. And I think you donated a little bit of money and it went towards community activities and engagement. Um, then also there's the Manitoulin uh, pageant at the community fair in Providence Bay. And the winner of the pageant actually goes to the Toronto CME and represents Manitoulin Island at, uh, in Toronto. And some years the girls have done, girls and guys, sorry, have done very well. Um, some years not so well, but they get the name out there that Manitoulin exists and the type of community it is. And then like I mentioned before, COVID unfortunately has had major impacts on these events, uh, on people's abilities to get together. But Manitoulin stayed strong, they figured out ways of how to still host these events, whether it be virtually or reduced capacity, and still really try to connect with their local communities. Okay. This is a picture of me after graduation. <laughs> so why I am or was in possession of the pop tabs and why I do care. So first of all, there isn't a pop tab collection on Manitoulin Island. Um, so it's a little bit uh, of a journey for my aunt to drop them off. Uh, the nearest one is in North Bay, which is about three hours away. And it wasn't such a problem when we had family there, but now we don't have family. So she heard and was very excited that I was collecting pop tabs for Theo's cause. Uh, she gave them to my cousin when she was up on the island to bring back to me. So if you remember from the first picture, it was a massive, I don't know, bag, what would you call it? It probably fit in the water cooler container as well. <laughs> and she, that was pretty much all her effort, all what she did. Um, so one direct impact it had on me that I saw was I did a placement at Able Living in 2019 and 2020. Able Living is an organization where people live within supportive housing. Um, they were in a like apartment building where other people just can rent apartments, but we had, I think, 
I think it was 12 rooms in this apartment building, so clients were integrated with just regular people of their community. And each client had, whether it be an intellectual difference or most had physical differences, and a lot of our clients used wheelchairs and really depended upon wheelchairs. So I was able to have that connection of, okay, pop tabs are really important because my clients, it's vital for them to live and get around their communities and participate with these wheelchairs. Um, so COVID really taught me the value of community and my job at Community Living. I'm gonna talk about it more in a little bit. Um, but just, yeah, with COVID, it really changed the way that we connect with one another, our capacity to get out and to meet new people and socialize. It really changed. It was really important to become creative and figure out other ways to get people involved. And definitely graduating during a pandemic really made it really pushed me to keep trying to make a difference and really think about what I wanted to do in life. So I'll talk a little bit about the current job that I really, really love. Um, so since September of 2020, I have been working at Community Living Mississauga. I work with individuals with intellectual differences. Um, and my job is to help them get engaged in activities, really get outside of their house and just prevent them from feeling really isolated and apathetic and like there's no point. So my job title is community support assistant. So really what does this mean? Throughout the pandemic, I've needed to be really creative in my community engagement. There was so much, you know, with all the lockdowns, it was kind of like a cycle. We finally opened up and I could do more with my clients. We could go, you know, to movies and we could go to Zumba classes and we could go to fitness and really start connecting with people. And then a few months later, or even a few weeks later, there was another shutdown. It's like, okay, what are we gonna do now? But I learned that even simple things of uh, being able to take my client to a local McDonald's where they got to know the cashier and have a conversation with them every week. Even that little thing made a huge difference. It just allowed them to reconnect and socialize with someone that they wouldn't get to see otherwise. Um, so the main goal of my job and the work I do with my clients is really to cut down on that social isolation um, but the challenge was really about these limitations and keeping physically safe as well. Like, you really want to go, like, uh, like, who cares? We really need to do a fitness class. We really need to go do something. But at the same time, you have your agency regulations. You have to stay safe. And the government, you know, tells you that you need to stay safe. So, yes, creativity, patience, motivation, perseverance, all very important when doing these roles. Um, one activity that I did with my client, we went to a pottery painting place. Um, how it related to her community connection, she has gotten very close to the neighbors and, that she lives with uh, in her neighborhood. And one of her neighbors really enjoys gardening and though they've bonded over that, she helps her garden sometimes. So she decided to paint this fairy for her neighbor to put in the garden. Um, she made it for her for their Christmas celebration, gave it to her. Her neighbor was really happy with it, and it was just a really good sense of accomplishment and, and connection with her. So even, you know, just a small thing, you know, let's go paint some pottery. It'll be a fun activity. It really made a difference to her. Okay, now let's talk about um, meeting Ralph, this place called Jungle Cat World, and his lions. <laughs> So in 2020, Ralph came to talk to my class about his pop tab collection, collection efforts and his story about meeting Theo. I don't know if Theo's really told you, uh, but basically they had the same wavelength. <laughs> he, I think he went into a store, right, a pet store? Yeah. I'll tell and, about yeah. You'll tell them? Okay. Yeah. I'll let you tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, Ralph collected pop tabs to raise funds for people in need of wheelchair assistance. Um, like Theo mentioned, he helped his Lions Club. He was very passionate about that. One of the events he talked to about um, with my <coughs> class was that they threw a bowling night and they had the means for everyone to participate. I think he told us that there was some kind of like um, apparatus that people could use when they sat in the wheelchair and could roll the bowling ball down uh, the alley. And, could fully participate, and they were able to do that with the funds of the pop tab. 
and with their determination to allow inclusion for everyone. This is definitely a value that I hold dearly as well. Um, as I pre uh, previously mentioned, I was a Special Olympics baseball coach for youth and adults with intellectual and physical differences. And as much as I was a coach for them, they really taught me everything I needed to know. Um, it was less about, it's a less about the competition, the winning and the logistics of baseball, more about how we can provide the means for everyone to participate and feel included. So that meant that the ball was on a peg that they could make it easier for them to hit it off. If that meant that someone else batted for a person that couldn't bat from themselves. They just, by the end of the day, just everyone had such a smile on their face and they were just so happy to be able to be included because previously, you know, people haven't been will so willing to modify games and allow everyone to be included. And that was just an amazing experience. If you can get involved, I definitely recommend that you do. Um, this just points to the fact that small actions such as collecting top tabs and modifying sports make such massive differences in people's lives and the communities that they're part of. Um, <laughs> Ralph also shared his obsession of lions with us. Um, Ralph happened to live right across from a place called Jungle Cat World. I forget the location of it, but we can Google it after. Um, and I, even before meeting Ralph, I had just stumbled across this place. It sounded amazing. It's an animal sanctuary. You can actually stay, they have a bed and breakfast type uh, thing at Jungle Cat World where you stay overnight. And mine, this is my balcony overlooking the lion <laughs> uh, enclosure. Um, so that was really cool. And I actually ended up going to Jungle Cat World just after Ralph had passed away. And it was really awesome to go in his honor, see the animals that he really appreciated and connected with, and even got to hear the lions roar at night, which was a really cool experience. Uh, here's some pictures. So Ralph um, gave me this jar of pop tabs as a symbol of still continuing to make a difference, to still try to collect as many pop tabs as I could. Um, and it was a really nice gesture for him to do that. This is a picture of me with Theo that he forced me to take. <laughs> in uh, one of his other classes, I had another family friend that um, every time they drank pop, they just took it off and put it in a container, and that's what they collected over time. Maybe not the healthiest, but hey, it makes a difference. <laughs> and this is the last time I presented uh, in 2020 when Ralph was here. Uh, so there's a really strong sense of community on the island, as you can probably uh, feel from the presentation so far. Uh, really, you can't go anywhere on the island without someone being curious about where you're from, what you're doing, what brought you to the island. You know, maybe sometimes you don't want to chat, but people are just genuinely curious and friendly and stuff. You know, just say, just engage in a conversation. They're very extremely welcoming demeanor, um, and there is a huge sense of family connectedness. Um, Basically, everyone on the island I'm like related to. I can't go any. I can't go to the grocery store without someone asking, you know, what my last name is and figuring out how we're connected. And it's like I just want to buy milk. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, it's nice to talk to people sometimes. People, people, you meet want to make the connections. They want to know your heritage. They want to know, you know, what you're doing in life. What's your purpose? Um, hot eaters definitely look out for one another, whether it be uh, helping, visiting, or there's still a lot of hitchhiking on Manitoulin Island, which maybe is scary to city folk. I don't know that I could do it, but a lot of people are still very trusting of their community members and are willing to help them get from point A to B, as there's no uh, Ubers or, <laughs> or anything like that on the island. Uh, there's lots of local businesses. Um, a lot of businesses, too, also donate directly to Manitoulin activities in the community. Uh, there's a lot of advocacy and decisions made on the interests of the island and the people. One example is, I can't remember how many years ago it was now, but there was debate about getting rid of the swing bridge, uh, which was awful to the locals because they've, it's the only swing bridge in Canada. It's such a staple of the island. That's what everyone knows them for. It's such a cool like relic too. 
So they were able to push and get it deemed to be a historic site, so that means it can never be touched, it'll never be taken away. Whether it's in use or not, it still will remain there. Um, there's a strong push against outside modern influence, so definitely Nantillon Island is like a very big escape from the city. Like, there's really no box stores, like I said, there's no Ubers, it's a very laid back way of life. Um, easy go with the flow, like you're there to relax, you know, is in a rush. Um, cell towers only came about 10 years ago. Um, definitely the locals are more open to it now, but at the time we really did not want cell towers to go on the island. Um, and no major companies, except for a recent Tim Hortons in Little Kern, I think it came about three years ago, and I was asking my family for their opinions on it, and they said, the service is so slow, like if you want to wait 45 minutes in the drive-thru, go ahead. And that just comes from <laughs> the workers not being used to working a really fast-paced life where everything's go, go, go. They want to have a conversation about uh, with you. Why are you getting your coffee today? You know, where are you off to? And that just doesn't work for people in a hurry. <laughs> Anyways, so Let's talk about a bit of social work, social problems on Manitoulin Island, as this is a social work program. So there definitely is limited resources and limited social work on the island, as again, it's small. Most efforts are made by volunteers and a lot of efforts are made by my family. There is a community living in Mindamoya, one of the main cities. Um, they do similar efforts to what, I, what we do at my community living in Mississauga. They just don't have as much of the resources and maybe places to go out and take clients and the people to interact with. But they're definitely trying, they're doing their own um, things to try and make the most for people in their communities. There's some social support and collaboration with First Nations people, but as we know with history, um, there's a lot of bias and tensions and uh, control of Indigenous stories and voices. So there's a bit of pushback when it comes to white Europeans trying to help um, in non-traditional ways for indigenous, there's sometimes conflict. But we try, there's committees on the island that tries to um, speak to both parties, uh, mediate between parties and come to conclusions of how we can all live together and support the community to our best ability. Um, definitely, uh, of course, the First Nations populations face more occurrences of drug and alcohol abuse and use, domestic violence, uh, school dropout. They're given the least amount of resources, unfortunately. There's a lot of um, unstable conditions in some of the communities. And one of, uh, there's a few different uh, reserves on the island still. There's only one reserve, it's still called an unceded Indian reserve. I absolutely hate having to call it that. But that language just points to our bias that we still hold um, of how we view people. Um, the reserve is called Wukumakam. So because they are not Canadian government controlled, the money funds, let's say, are given to the band chief. And then it's the band chief that determines where the money fund resources go. And sometimes you have really amazing people in roles that really look after their people, really care about their people and sometimes you don't, so that's an ongoing conflict. And you do find some discrimination and misunderstanding between white European and First Nations on the island. And so here are just some pictures I've taken over the years of the natural beauty of Manitoulin Island. So up in this corner is Brandeville Falls. And then over there is the Cup and Saucer Trail. It's a really beautiful lookout trail, hiking trail. Down here is Providence uh, Bay Beach. It's really nice, there's a boardwalk around it. Um, this is the swing bridge down here, and this is actually the swing bridge opening for the boats to go through the canal. Uh, canal. I forget, it used to be it swung every hour on the hour for about 20 minutes. I think they've reduced it a bit with COVID. And a really amazing uh, celebration that I've been able to go to, I went to a powwow one time in Wakun Mekong. At uh, the annual cultural festival, it's the first weekend in August. Um, the leaders of the community come out and teach about their uh, practices and their people, which is really amazing. But again, with uh, 
COVID, I think they had to cancel it the last few years. Uh, this is Rathfield Falls Frozen. I don't know if any of you would be interested in going to Mantulin when it's winter, but it is really beautiful to see. Um, so if you do take a trip to Mantulin Island, there's my email if you have any questions, you want to tell me about it, you need any suggestions. Um, always I want to hear if you enjoyed it, if you found it fascinating. And obviously say hello to my relatives, you will definitely meet a Howard. <laughs> Uh, this is the sunset over Lake Mindamoya, and that's actually crossing the Swing Bridge. And again, enjoy beautiful Manitoulin Island. Um, I had, so my family owns a sugar bush on the island where we make our own maple syrup. And, you know, the intentions were there, good heart. I had made maple syrup fudge to bring today for all of you. I don't know what went wrong. In the morning I woke up and it was just goop. It was liquid. <laughs> So unfortunately, that didn't happen, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but the intention was there. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for listening. Yes. How big is the island? Like how, like size-wise? Yeah, I should have looked that up. <laughs> um, when I was looking, so locals, there's only about fourteen thousand locals on that island. Um, Size-wise, I'm not really sure, but it's not very big. Like, what can I compare it to? It's 1,068 square miles. Ah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what's your experience been like in like Toronto and like Mississauga versus Manitoulin Island? Honestly, it's kind of when I get to the island, it's like, oh, I can take a break. Like here, it's just so fast-paced. Go, go, go. Everyone's always in a rush, right? Mm -hmm. And we kind of get lost and caught up in things that, I don't know, aren't so important or I'm finding aren't so important. Manitoulin, it's very about like, let's take care of our people, it's laid back, like let's have a good time, it's a vacation, like don't worry about those assignments you have coming up, like just relax, right? And that's why it, really the Tim Hortons isn't working <laughs> because the workers don't think that way. They want to have a conversation with you. They want to get to know you, right? And uh, yeah, fast-paced food and friendly, engaged people just don't really go together. <laughs> I myself worked at Tim Hortons a few years ago, and I get, yeah, I hated it because of how fast-paced it was and how much people are in a rush and how grumpy they can be and stuff. Like it, yeah, it wasn't a fun job. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Do you know any Lloyds on the island? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I'm trying to think of first names. Lloyds. Um, like last name Lloyds, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, to, I'll get back to you on that one. Okay. Some names. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely know that last name. <laughs> and the Jungle Cat World is 45 yeah. minutes away from Toronto in Orano. Yes, Orano. Yeah, thank oh. you. It's okay. It's Orano. I have to go there for a Yuka tournament this Sunday with Lynn. <laughs> Yeah, so that as well, I'll sell that. That was a really awesome experience. Um, we were able to go through the zoo, if you want to call it, or the sanctuary at night, which was so different. Like, you don't get that anywhere else, really. It looks amazing. You yeah. can see um, different predators. You can yeah. meet them. You can stay in, like, a, a, tr like a, a campsite, like, right close mm -hmm. by. But you can also stay where you stay. Yeah. You yeah, it was a really unique experience. Kylie, how did you get to be Kylie? <laughs> I mean, you know, someone who cared and yeah. did these things, get involved in those, and how did that happen? I've known you a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I knew Kylie when she was in intro psych. I used to teach intro psych. That's mm -hmm. how I first met her. Oh, nice. Yeah, she has a bit of an issue getting to class on time. Doesn't <laughs> 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 I'm using my cell phone. <laughs> I did really well in your class. Um, so how, did I, you, what, how did you get to be this? That's a good question. Um, I don't think I've always been like this, but I think my life experiences, um, I have a brother on the autism spectrum. I've seen that, you know, people get treated differently and it's just important to be an ally and an advocate for others and uh, do everything you can in your ability to give people, I don't know, the same experiences. I don't know, I don't really have a good answer. But um, I've just always had a passion of caring about where people come from, why they're in the situations they're in, and wanting to help 
any way that I can, even if it's just going for a coffee with someone. more willing to help because there's that strong sense of community and wanting everyone to kind of fit in and have that support that definitely exists um, in the GTA as well but I think it's just sometimes harder to find uh, we have just varying opinions you know like Theo pointed out like people's manicures are more important than the environment here we find more whereas that's not the case on Manitoulin Island like there's potholes in the road, volunteers are gonna go out and fix those potholes because we don't wanna damage people's cars, right? Um, uh, along the lines of empowering, I don't know, I just find that there's people that are willing to be there for you, provide support to you, and it kinda cycles through, like, if you have a really good experience with locals or the community helping you out or supporting you, you're more inclined to do it as well. And I think, yeah, being in a smaller town, smaller community, that just exists a lot more than in a big, broad area. Any other questions? Does anyone have interesting facts about themselves? <laughs> Can you compete with mine? <laughs> no? Or if it's tough to compete. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, give it up again for Tyler. Thank you.